the state of Michigan versus Donald Raymond Lamont Lester. We are here today for a final pretrial conference in this case uh, ahead of a trial scheduled for June 20th and 21st. We are proceeding today partially in person and partially by video conference. First, let me have the attorneys place their appearances on the record, beginning with Ms. McClure. E.B. McClure filling in for Prosecutor of Record Isaac Sneed. Good morning, Your Honor. True Science appearing on behalf of YouTube. Samaris Hennigan on behalf of Donald Lester. All right. And uh, Mr. Lester, I believe, is in the uh, jail Zoom 2 device. Mr. Lester, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right. So uh, I don't know what's going on with the camera. We can't see you. It looks to be almost I'm, I'm saying that we can't see you mr lester um so ms uh hennigan uh where do we stand are we ready to proceed to trial on june 20th thank you your honor uh i met with my client yesterday and did make the final offer to him with regards to the agreements my client has declined to accept um the the plea that was offered by prosecution I also was informed by my client that he um, has filed a few motions, I guess you would say pro se. I have not seen those motions myself, but he says he mailed them to the court. Uh, he does have many objections to the proceedings. That being said, the next step that would be appropriate um, with regard to our legal procedures would be to go forward with trial. I am prepared to do that, um, though I do believe that my client will object to that, Your Honor. Um, so I do want to make sure that I represent his wishes as well, while I still inform the court of whether or not I'm ready to proceed. So I, I will be ready to proceed for trial next week. That being said, my client does not want to go to trial as he feels that this that the court doesn't have jurisdiction over him on this matter in order for us to move to trial. And he was very upset, I would add, just for the record, for his, uh, for appellate purposes for him, that he was upset that I agreed to a trial schedule um, at a past hearing. And I, I did try to explain to him that that's just a procedure, that the court is on time frames uh, according to statute, and that at some point we do have to set a trial schedule, even though it was my intent to continue to try to uh, negotiate this case for him along the way. All right, to the extent that there's any objection based on uh, court's jurisdiction, uh, I would- I can't hear you, can you speak up please? To the extent that hearing. there's, to the extent that there's an, any objection uh, to proceeding to trial based on the court's jurisdiction, I would deny that as uh, the court uh, does have jurisdiction over this case, it is a, uh, felony case involving an alleged felony, which is alleged to have occurred within uh, Lenawee County, State of Michigan. Uh, this is the circuit court for the Lenawee County, State of Michigan, and therefore uh, jurisdiction is appropriate. Uh, um, Ms. McClure, uh, is there anything we need to address from the people's side? Um, the people have not received any motions that have been referenced, um, but as far as I know, we are prepared to proceed to trial next week as well. All right, so uh, do we have proposed jury instructions and what your questions yet? We do not, and I spoke with Mr. Sneed yesterday, but I'm certain that we can, um, we can agree upon those within the next day or so. Right. I see some in our file, so maybe he's drafted them and just not. Yes, it was working on them. Okay, so I'll need those by the end of the week so that we have uh, an adequate amount of time to get prepared right. um, uh, for trial. I would also like to uh, intervene here real quick, but that being said. How much do you want to bet that this man is probably about to say something completely idiotic? I was uh, the motion is just not for the jurisdiction. It's also for personal jurisdiction, subject matter jurisdiction. Um, I had the right to a resistant unlawful arrest and it's not being addressed. Uh, the Supreme Court ruling on that. Uh, I just read that not too long ago. And um, 
they arrested me for uh, an old traffic ticket. Is where it started at. Um, they're trying to guys the point of uh, where they harassed me for three days before they arrested. Me. Um, and as far as this possession uh, situation go, um, I was informed yesterday by my attorney, who I haven't talked to since uh, March, uh, that I was looking at 14 years. Um, under your court, Michigan rules that uh, after 10 years, under a lower uh, a lower uh, felony after 10 years, it's automatically expunged. So I'm trying to figure out how am I being charged with a habitual criminal. And also, I would like to get that in writing that you said that you have jurisdiction over this case, but not the said person. And that's all in the motions that I sent over to the clerk's office. I also have them all notarized. I also have copies of everything that I sent over there. So there should be somewhere in your file that y'all should have it. Excuse me, sir. But what in the doohickey are you talking about? Your Honor, I And personal. And like I said, I haven't talked to this woman since March. <laughs> She told me that I was going to be released out for bond, uh, and I haven't heard anything from her since then. I wrote her a letter. The first time I've seen this woman in about two or three months, the first time was yesterday. And she doesn't represent the said name anyway. I've talked to her about that situation, too. Somebody's not being truthful here. And I've been sitting here all right. ten months without a bond okay. or... And, or even so much as calling my witnesses, she's never asked me anything. So my due process is being violated. Also, I'm sitting in here on an unsigned warrant. Unsigned. A probable cause warrant. They're trying to make it look like they arrested me for those charges, and that's what that's, it's, it's not what it was for. That's not what it was for. I was arrested for driving on a suspended license from back in 2016. That case got dismissed. Yeah, sure it did. Your Honor, I did inform him. He's not addressing none of those issues, Your Honor. Period. Mr. Mr. Lester, I need you to stop interrupting people, okay? What is it that you wanted to say? Uh, I, I did inform him yesterday that the charges he was facing could um, get it up to 14 years because there's consecutive sentencing available on those charges. He has a felony that is up to 10 years and then two RNOs, which can be sentenced consecutively if that were requested and or if the court were to do it. And I informed him of that at the time that I was telling him about the plea agreement that would allow him to be released today. Um, so he is correct in that I did inform him of that, but it's not because of a habitual offender um, notice. And he asked me about that yesterday, and I reiterated again yesterday that that is not why. Um, that is not why he's facing that amount of time. It, it was simply me telling him worst case scenario um, in this matter. All right. So uh, to the extent that the personal jurisdiction issue has been raised in addition to subject matter jurisdiction and again, deny any request uh, on, on those bases because the court, again, has personal jurisdiction over Mr. Lester, who is a uh, human being located in Lenawee County, Michigan and alleged to have commit a felony crime in Lenawee County, Michigan. How did I commit a violent uh, crime? To with respect to the argument that Mr. Lester made regarding the right to resist an unlawful arrest, uh, that's why the court is having a trial. One of the elements that the prosecutor needs to prove uh, in a uh, resisting and obstructing case is that the officers were uh, on duty, acting lawfully, and, and made a lawful arrest that uh, Mr. Lester uh, resisted. So that's, that's the purpose of the trial. Uh, with respect to uh, any issue about uh, expunged convictions. Uh, we're, not, we're not even to that point yet. The, the habitual offender issue comes into play only after uh, a conviction has entered, and then the court has to determine whether the convictions listed in the habitual offender notice in fact happen and can appropriately be used under the statute uh, for the sentencing enhancements that uh, have been notified uh, in the information. And so... Uh, 
I'm sure that everything that that judge just explained just flew right over that man's head. He didn't understand anything. Okay. So I'll yeah, do this. Whatever you get done, I'd like to address the issue too, please. All right. I'm going to mute Mr. Lester uh, because I'm, I can't have people talking over me while I'm trying to uh, create a record. Uh, all right, so then we are ready to proceed to trial on June 20th. Again, I'd, I'd like to have the voir dire questions and jury instructions uh, ready or, or to the court by the end of the week so that we can have those uh, ready to go. Thank you, Yaron. Yeah, um, before we go, uh, can I just... Ms. McClure, Ms. McClure, can I just understand from you what that final offer you made on this case or what the final offer the prosecution made on this case was? Yes, <clears throat> it would be. Ms. McClure, I actually have a copy that I could pass to the court too, if that's okay with you. Yeah, I, I mean, it, we'll just take a second. It's an added count for possession of meth in a park, which is a two-year offense. And we were offering credit for time served, which is approximately 10 months. And we have no objection to a PR bond at the time the plea is taken. Uh, the prosecution has made an offer to resolve the case uh, if Mr. Lester were willing to plead guilty to uh, possession of methamphetamine in a park, that's a two-year uh, maximum possible penalty. But the prosecution has also agreed to uh, credit for time served and, or fines and costs and a personal recognizance bond release until the date of the sentencing. Is that all accurate, Ms. McClure? How is that? that yes. Yeah. Easy. Yes, All that's right. accurate, Your Honor. And uh, Mr. Lester is not interested in uh, agreeing to that plea. Is that correct? It's my understanding, but it uh, seems that he would like to say something about it, Your Honor. So I prefer that he answer that question yeah. himself. Yeah. I, I would like to say something because of the fact that you keep trying to let me out on a PR bond and you want me to come back to court for sentencing. But you won't let me out to try to get my witnesses and gather the evidence that I need to be able to present it at trial. I haven't even went over this one. I haven't even went over any kind of defense with this woman. I am being prosecuted and persecuted by her and a prosecutor. And it's obvious. It's very obvious. It stands out. I haven't talked to this lady since March. March. And when I did, she came in there and coerced me into trying to keep her on my case. All right. So, Mr. Lester, that wasn't really responsive to the question that was asked. The question you're being I don't asked know right nothing now. about that. I told her what it was then. And, and Mr. I said, Lester, Mr. Lester. You keep trying I, to cut me off. Well, that's because you won't let me create the right. record and do my job. So I, I'm I trying try to, to do my get... job. You're not the one sitting in jail, sir. Your Honor, would All you right, please so mute my client? I, I don't want him to- Record should reflect to... that. Okay, the record should reflect that Mr. Lester had, I'm sorry. So. Mr. Lester, the, the question I'm asking and that I need an answer to is, is uh, you, you've heard the offer that I've indicated the prosecution has made to you to resolve the case. Do you or do you not want to? No, I'm not it? because they had no business arresting me, Your Honor. And and all, I wasn't no, bothering no, anybody. Simple no is fine. That's all I needed. All I needed was no. Um, so We're talking to you answer, like a kid. The answer is no, so we will proceed to trial next week. Uh, I don't think there's anything else we need to address this morning. So, bond. Mr. Lester, I need a bond.